Hello Onliners! This is me again, Teacher Donna, and welcome to my channel. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell button to receive new updates. Welcome to my channel and today I'll be sharing free websites that you can use with your students or with your kids. I know that it is really stressful to find a free website online and nowadays a lot of parents as well are doing their job because of the pandemic. So I hope that this video is helpful to all of you. So. Personally, I'm also using these websites with my students and it's really effective. I'm telling you, so I hope you can use this free website. So first is you need to open your browser, of course. I already have mine open here. That's Google Chrome. And just go to this page, www.storyberries.com. So this is actually the Storyberries. So we have here five tabs. We have the home. So this is already the home page. We have the fairy tales or bedtime stories. So they put here the latest bedtime stories that they have for the website. So you can just choose any of these. It depends on your topic. Next up is we have the stories. For you as a teacher, we really don't um, go for the age, but we usually go for the student's level, right? And for those moms out there or parents out there, I hope you can as well know the level of your kids, aside from the age, of course. Next, we also have the time. So we need to maximize our time. So for me, I go for five minute stories because in, in my class, we're also using um, other material for our lessons. So we also have the type, we have the topic, and we have the conversation. We also have here the audiobooks. For the audiobooks, it's about listening, about the stories. Okay, we also have story berries, TV. I don't usually do uh, use this because we need speaking time. So I don't let them s watch any videos somehow. And right now, I will be sharing how do I use this with my student online. So let's have an example here. Okay, let's go to Tasha Source. Okay, here. Look at the picture. So the picture as well is really good for kids out there. They will enjoy. It's colorful, right? And it looks so, you know, fun to, to see it or to watch it. Okay. What I do with my student is I always present first the photo or the picture. And I let him or her describe the picture itself. So we also have here, Tasha goes on a nighttime adventure visiting all the planets in solar system. So you can ask your students, like because we're talking about solar system, do you know the eight planets in the solar system? And then if your student, of course, they know the Korean, the Japanese terms, but in your case, you don't understand that, you can let him or her type it and just translate it. It's easier that way. And then you can also ask what other, you know, things that they can see here or can you describe the girl? 
okay and you can also maybe in your case if it's really hard for your students you can just give series of words it's easier for your students and also leading questions as well so let's go down so we have here again Tasha source look at that all right so this is actually the start of the story so this is really nice this is the first page of the story so you can let your student um, repeat after you so you need to read it first let your students repeat and after reading each page of this material you need to ask your student or kids what's the reason why I do that and not at the end part it's because I know if I let him or her just read all the pages and ask questions at the end of the story that I will not know if my student understood the story in that particular page so to measure the comprehension skill I need to ask every page just to know if the student really understood or if the student maybe has some questions with new words or unfamiliar words okay here so this is really a good website for all of us so look at that it's, it's so cute right so i hope that you can use this and you can also comment down below if you enjoy using this material with your students or with your kids the second website that I'll be sharing is another free website about Disney princesses all you have to do is just type princess okay already have that one princess.disney.com okay, here so just go directly to games and activities all right so as you can see we have the dress up we have the stories here as well and others so what i do is i usually let the student play first as motivation or energizer before we go to the story for example i will open ariel's dress up it's loading okay here all right so in this case, you can let your student play the dress up. For example, let's go to background first. So you can ask your student what kind of background you would like to have for Princess Ariel. For example, your student will say, oh, I like this. I like this because she's inside um, her house. And then from then, you can already ask like do you know the kinds of houses that we have so you can already um, have a discussion with kinds of houses that we have so we have the castle in your case you are living in apartment right so something like that we also have the dress here so which dress you would like Ariel to wear so for example oh teacher I like that oh it's pretty right so what are the colors of this dress so you can ask your student and we also have the accessories and also the stickers and just click finish if you're done and let's just go back after that you can just go to the story let's go to Ariel story now so we have here the reading and the listening part let's go to listening part i usually have this with my student just to measure my students listening skills ariel's story deep beneath the sea lived a little mermaid named ariel 
She loved exploring her underwater home with her friend Flounder, but dreamed of living on land as a human. Ariel was always searching for human treasures. When she and Flounder found a strange forked object, they swam to the surface to find Scuttle the seagull. It's a dinglehopper, he proclaimed. Ariel's father was King Triton, ruler of the sea. He thought humans were dangerous. When he learned that Ariel had been to the surface, he forbade her to ever go again. Then he asked Sebastian the Crab to keep an eye on her. But Ariel continued to go to the surface. One night, a terrible storm swept across the sea. Ariel and Flounder watched as a prince fell off a huge ship. I must save him, she cried. Ariel pulled Prince Eric to shore and sang to him. Then Prince Eric only caught a glimpse of Ariel's face, but he knew he would remember her beautiful voice forever. Desperate to see Prince Eric again, Ariel agreed to give her voice to the evil sea witch, Ursula. With bigger plans in mind, Ursula cast a spell and turned Ariel into a human. But if Prince Eric didn't kiss Ariel by sunset on the third day, she would become a mermaid again. Even worse, she would belong to the Sea Witch forever. Charmed by her silent beauty, Prince Eric showed Ariel his kingdom. Ariel loved being with the prince in the human world, but the two had not yet kissed. Worried that Prince Eric was falling in love with Ariel, Ursula transformed herself into the beautiful Vanessa. She was going to make the prince fall in love with her instead. Disguised as Vanessa and using Ariel's voice, the sea witch cast a spell on Prince Eric. He thought he was in love. He was going to marry Vanessa. Ariel had lost her true love. Just before sunset on the third day, Scuttle discovered that Vanessa was Ursula in disguise. He hurried to warn Ariel. As Sebastian went to find King Triton, Ariel and Flounder raced to catch Prince Eric's ship. With the help of her friends, Ariel was able to stop the wedding and get her voice back. Released from Ursula's spell, Prince Eric realized that Ariel was the one he truly loved.